Uh, all right, uh, Mario. So, so in today's demo, we're going to see what is employee central and how this will benefit, uh, and uh, you know what all topic we're going to cover in the employee central. Right. So, employee success factor is a cloud-based solution. Um, so, I hope you aware about you know what is cloud-based solution. Yes, yes, I am. I was reading actually about it, and I know that it is a cloud-based solution. And the employee central covers uh, HR data and uh, um, object uh, object specification. Let's say it's a foundation object, which HR data evolves or includes uh, the employee's information, like uh, personal data and job data, and then the foundation uh, uh, objects. It includes the company structure and yeah, the other stuff that has to do with the company. So, right. Mm -hmm. right. So that is what the employee central is all about. It is more than maintaining the employee data because there's a lot of uh, configuration which is involved in your employee central. There is a lot of foundation mm -hmm. object. There's a lot of uh, succession data. Then there's a lot of business rule also, which is there. Yeah. So in uh, the coming session, we're going to see all these detail that how we can do all these configuration, but then yes, it is right. Success factor, it is your cloud-based solution. And um, so let's go ahead and see. So we are talking with employee central. So in your employee central, we're going to talk about from the hiring till your retirement and how all those data has to be maintained for an employee. Like for example, you can see there is a personal information so all those data about the personal information about an employee, like national ID, address. Then you can also see there is an employment information related data. You can also yeah, maintain yeah. talent profile, note, history, uh, your compensation related data, benefit, variable pay, right? So all those data, you can go ahead yeah. and maintain into your employee center. Okay. Then you can also see the employee picture here. You can see the employee detail, what this employee is doing, which location, phone number, and uh, you know LinkedIn and Facebook if it is mapped. So you can see all those details about an employee. All right. So all right, all right. success factor, it's a combination of a, um, succession data and corporate data. Corporate data, it is like your corporate data and succession data, which is a personal data. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, so <clears throat> it plays a lot of important role because from your employee central, your data gets flowed into the other module, right? Mm -hmm. So like uh, it gets flowed into learning elements, which is a training and even management module. Then it gets flowed to the performance and goal management module, uh, you know, yeah. because when you're doing the... the Yes, so it you know so lots of data which actually gets flowed from the employee central to your other uh, module. Then you also have a compensation when you're doing the learning compensation. So there also your employee data gets flowed from the employee central to your compensation. Then you have a succession and development also, right? So basically, from employee central uh, mm -hmm. to most of the other module of your success factor, data gets flowed. So that is the reason it is important to, um, you know, code module of your success factor. Mm -hmm. um, before we uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, start doing the configuration for your um, uh, employee central, it is also important that, you know, you have to give a permission to certain people, right? Not everybody, okay. they get a permission. So there are certain specific people who will get a permission to maintain those data. And okay. those permission. Uh, so those permissions you have to give, like, for example, let's suppose there are two consultants in Employee Central itself. Not both the consultants will get the same access, right? One is an experienced person and another mm -hmm. is a comparatively less experienced person. So the person who's less experienced, maybe he will get only the data to view. And the person who's an experienced person, he can view and plus he can also edit. So you're right? talking about uh, RBP, role-based yes. permissions? Right. I'm talking about the RBP, which is a role-based permission. So we're going to see how we can give all these access to different people. And that's where we can control everything, uh, what access has to be given and what access is not has to be given. So here you can see the role-based permission. In your role-based permission, you will see manage permission group. 
and manage from mission role that is coming. A uh, group uh, is not. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you have a demo? Um, I mean, this is a demo that you're showing me right now. But then when we are going to be doing it, am I going to have a demo where I can start practicing? Yes, we will provide you the demo system access. Uh, uh, you know, it, yeah. the system access will be there with you. And you can go ahead and practice 24 into 7 whenever you want. You can go ahead and practice. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, so those details, you can go ahead and do that. So like we were just talking about your those data. So, um, hi, hi. Right. So uh, this is what we do actually in the role-based permission. So in your role-based permission, you will see uh, there are two things, which is your manage permission group and another that is manage permission role. Mm -hmm. In your manage permission group, what we do, we just assign uh, employee who will have an access to uh, that particular role. And in the role, we actually give the access to the module. So yeah. any specific module, if you want to give an access or any particular Within the same module, whether you want to give an access to view or you want to give an access to uh, read or you want to give an access to edit mm -hmm. and whether you want to give an access to delete anything. So all these details, we one, can control. One, yeah. One quick question, Amish. Uh, if the company, let's say you're working for a company and that company wants to install the EC module. Mm -hmm. uh, when they install the EC module, do they have access to the onboarding, the compensation, all the stuff? They, uh, when you are installing EC module, they will have access only to the EC module. Um, um, you know, but yes, they also have in the backend, they also have an access to all the other module, but then you need mm -hmm. to activate it. Now what oh, happens okay. if you activate only EC module, they will only be able to see EC, but let's suppose you have not taken the license for onboarding and for RCM, but if you go ahead and activate, and if success okay. factor gets to know that you have activated this for your client, then they okay. will charge thrice the amount of what normally you have to pay for the license. All right, all right, I see, I see. Yeah. Thank you. All right, sure. so it is always better you activate only the module which your client has, uh, uh, you know, paid. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And all this activation is done in provision. Uh, activation can be done. Uh, yes, activation can be done from the provisioning. Oh, but then it can also be done from the instance. Uh, well, your um, not all the activation can be done from the instance. In instance, you have your uh, RBP from where you can activate to different different role, but okay. uh, the major activation it is actually happening from the uh, provisioning architecture. That's where you activate, and then it comes to the instance architecture. For sure. Uh, please forgive me. I asked the questions. Like... No, no problem. Okay. Thanks. So it's perfectly fine. You want to learn. That's the reason you're asking all these questions, right? Yes, because uh, I've been reading before I actually contacted you. But then the thing is, uh, when you are learning by yourself, and you're reading all that without any material to like go through, or without anybody that you can take those with, it's kind of a bit difficult and yes so yeah. it is difficult because um uh, see technical thing you cannot uh, learn of your own yeah, um, yeah you need a trainer to who can guide you and who can uh, teach you for all these uh, your technical right i mean you know, there are books like you know which are available thousand pages book how much you're going to read right so it becomes a bit boring also yeah very boring yeah so that is the okay. reason it is uh, always better that when you are learning the technical detail, it is you always learn it from a proper tra trainer who will guide you what to do. And at least he will filter out all unnecessary information which is required in the employee central. Yes, that's that's exactly my point. I don't want to be going through so much unnecessary information and lose a lot of time. All right. All right. So let's move on. So uh, the next the topic we're going to see that is a permission rule. So when you select a permission, so you will see all your role, uh, like module wise, like, you know, you will see it is like, uh, you know, it is coming here, like you can see calibration, goal, performance, and career development planning and all other, uh, you know, role, which is here. 
Then you have okay. to select it whether you want to give a view permission, you want to give them the history permission, you want to give them an edit or insert permission, you want to give them a correct permission, or you want to give them a delete permission. All right. So different right. employee, they will have a different access, and that's where you need to create a different role for them. Okay. And um, so once a role has been created, you can see here there is an administrator permission also. So there are two mm -hmm. kinds of permission. One is a user permission and another is the administrative permission. What is administrative yeah. permission? Administrative permission are the permission which is given to the success factor consultant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your user permission are the permission if you want to give a certain access to your employee. Okay. All right. So okay. that is what is the difference between your uh, user permission and administrative permission. Administrative mm -hmm. permission, it is nothing. It's just your, if you have a success factor access, so uh, you can see this admin center, right? So this is the administrative permission. Yeah, yeah. This is a place, you know, where you can do all the configuration. Okay, but okay. To normal user, you don't give this permission because they don't have to do all these configuration. Right? Okay, so okay. that is the reason user permissions are different and your uh, administrative permissions are different. Okay, okay. Then you will also see the personal and employment data. As I told you in the starting, that employee central is divided into uh, your corporate and your succession data. Succession data is nothing, it's just a personal data. And employment mm -hmm. data, it is your corporate data. So you can see yeah. national ID information is coming, so which is a kind of a personal in nature, right? Because everybody will have their own separate uh, national ID. Correct. Okay. So that's a personal data and your address information. This is also kind of a personal data because everybody has their own unique address, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so that's where you will also see the address information. Now moving ahead further, then you can see there is a country specific information data. So certain data yeah. which are country specific, like for example, when you select, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this USA, so you will see that uh, it will start showing you the USA states and it will start showing you the USA, uh, your city, right? Uh -huh, when you will uh -huh. select a different country, uh, so it will show you, uh, like you're in Angolia, right? So in Angolia, yeah. once you select as a country, it will show me as a different uh, state and it will show me as a different city, right? So because so that's a country specific data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then here you can see employee file user interface. Uh, this employee file user interface is basically it's talking about the UDF file. That's where. Uh, Excuse uh, me, Avish, just one quick question. Uh, the whole country information, right? Country information, it also includes the information like the tax information or the laws of the country. Like yes. For the uh, HR department. The thing is this, uh, who, uh, configures or who puts that information in success factors, or is it something that comes um, that comes def from default? Or once you choose the country, success factors knows where it's going to get the information about the whole uh, laws of the country, the tax information, and stuff like that. Or is it something that you have to configure yourself? Okay, now there are certain information uh, which is like uh, uh, you know. Uh, which is not Beautiful. like to change, which is like, uh, like for example, if I select it as a uh, Angolia, so the state and the city it won't change, right? It won't change that often. So something okay. which is like it won't change that often, that is something which is defaulted by success factor. Okay. Okay. And something which is like, uh, which which is like uh, client specific information. Okay. Right. So in that case, you will have to configure all these details. Oh, the client specific information. Huh. Those the client specific information, like uh, see when it comes to payroll, no two company have a same policy for payroll, right? Everybody yeah, yeah, has yeah. their own formulas mm -hmm. and everybody has their own policy. So those formula and everything you will have to configure into the system. So you meaning like uh, the tax information because like imagine every country has a different tax information. Yes. Every country uh, has a different, uh, you know, taxes. Every country has a different strategy deductions. So mm -hmm. uh, those, all these detail, it is like, you know, uh, when it comes, so you have to configure it. But anyhow, 
uh, taxes and other detail, it is part of a ECP and uh, which is employee central payroll. But however, we are just only talking about the employee oh, okay. central right now. Sure, sure. Uh, right. So that's a two different separate module. All right. As of now, we are just talking about the employee center. So we'll just focus yeah. only on the employee center. When it comes okay. to taxes and everything, that those part, the payroll part has been taken care of into your employee central payroll, which is called known also as a ECP. Okay, sure. I get right. it. Then you will see uh, your employee information, like you maintaining all this employee information. So any data of your employee, uh, whether it's a first name, last name, you can see to whom employees reporting, my phone number, email ID, the address, the family related, if, if a person is married, uh, you know, the wife information, children information, any kind okay. of a personal information, it is like, you know, you have to go ahead and maintain all these details. Normally you would have seen, it's like, you know, when you join a new company, uh, your yeah, HR yeah. department comes to you and give you a certain sheet to fill, right? Yeah, yeah. That sheet is a combination of your uh, personal and the corporate data. So employee central is nothing. It's just the uh, same data, which has gone the technical. Okay, okay. But it is not that simple, you know, like you filling those Excel sheets. There is a lot of configuration which has to be done also. Okay, sure. All right. So there's a lot of configuration which goes into the employee central and uh, which we will see with the regular session how it is going to be. And after mm -hmm. that, uh, you will also see there is a personal information. So we just talked about the personal information, which is in kind of a personal in nature. So all those details, we're going to see your all these section and everything, it will be personal in nature, right? Like okay. your family member detail, your phone number, your personal mail ID, your personal bank detail, right? So all these are personal information. Mm -hmm. So employment information, it is nothing. It's just a corporate related information, like which department, which position you're going to work, which uh, division you're going to work, right? So all these details, that is, uh, these are the, uh, employment information right okay. like what is a pay grade uh you know they have defined so these pay grade it's already defined by the company itself right and then they decide uh you know which pay grade you're going to fit into then you have a regular and temporary um uh, you know detail how much is the hour you're going to work what is the position that you're holding what is the id they have created which company which company id department, department ID, all these are the employment related information, which your organization will maintain all these detail and then you will be able to see all these detail into the, all right? Well, one question. Uh, yes. The way you were right now, the previous page with, uh, I think it's- screen? Yeah, I think it's okay. Michael Hoff or whatever. No, where you, were, where you were just now, like before. Yeah, that one. So Marcus Hoff, of is her manager is the latest manager that's under there or what's this guy here this is uh, the manager Michael Hoff is working as a sales director well in this screen you can't make it out who's uh you know whether okay. Michael Hoff is a manager for that person or not because there is no information which is showing up here but oh, yes okay. in your personal information when you come into your employee file you will see that to whom you're reporting to like, for example, oh. if I come here into this system and if I come here into my associate file, I can see uh, to whom I am basically reporting. Okay, okay. Right. So you will see all these details into the system. So my user ID it is actually with Ellen. So okay. here you will see all these details. It will show here and see all these data and everything. If you have maintained, it will show. And mm -hmm. if you have not maintained, it will not show. So here you will see. Uh, your all these details. So like, for example, you can see in the job information, you have the supervisor, right? Okay. So you yeah. are, so the Ellen is actually, Ellen Rickert is reporting to and uh, Lau, right? So like this, you can see who's a supervisor for this person, all right? So all your employee central data, you will see into your this section, like you can see the personal information. So here you can see all personal related information about this employee. So whatever the data you have maintained, you will see whatever the data you have not maintained, you will not see. Like for example, here you can see ID information. Here you can see this biographical information, right? And then you can also create a certain field. And if you want to add certain 
calculation, automatic calculation, you can also go ahead and add those certain automatic calculation. Then if there is any uh, contact information, you can maintain this here. Address you can maintain here. Dependent you can maintain here. And recently you can see this section has been created for COVID information. You can see it's like you know, your organization wants to know that whether you have taken uh, dose one, dose two, and the booster dose or not, right? So that you know employee uh, are also safe in the organization, right? So all these details, you can create it and you can maintain all these information. Then here you can see this pay payment related information, right? You'll also have the compensation related information. If you want to see the compensation statement, uh, <clears throat> here you can see the compensation related statement also, right? So it will show you all these details about an employee and you can download and you can check it. So this is what all these sections you can see. You can also see the payroll related information time time related information by central so there are uh, your personal information which you'll be seeing and yeah. in your personal information you will see your uh, uh, so personal information is nothing it's just that uh, those information which are personal uh, to you like your yes, national id and your address also it is personal right so mm -hmm. all these information that you will see and you will so have to maintain, like you can see ID information, address, biographical information, contract information. So all these are, and as we discussed, you know, that your employee central is majorly divided into two kinds of a data model, which is known as a corporate data model and your succession data model. Succession data model is nothing, it's just a personal data model and your uh, corporate data model, it's something related with the corporate. Uh, just one thing, sir. Uh, succession data model um, can it also be defined as HR mod uh, HR data? Sorry. Can it also be defined as HR data, like uh, the data pertaining the user's uh, work information, like from where he's been working at to where he's working now and is, uh, let's say, job experiences and the information, personal information. Can that be succession data module? Yes. Um, where you have worked in the past, obviously, that's going to be the succession data because okay, that's okay. a data which you are providing to the organization, right? Organization okay. certainly will not know that. Okay. Okay, right? okay. Your current organization, whatever the data they're going to provide you, that will be known as a corporate data. Sure, sure. All right. Uh, the corporate data has to do with posi job position, yes. what you're doing, stuff like that. Okay. All right. Understand in this way, Mario, the information which your corporate provides to you, that is a corporate data, and the information okay. which, uh, which an employee provides to the organization, that is known as a succession data. Succession data. Okay, sure. All right, so, so employment information, it's nothing, it's just a corporate data. So where you can see your pay grade, regular, uh, temporary employee, how many standard weekly hour a person has to work on, what is the FTE, um, you know, what is a job classification, what is a title, what is a position ID, right? So these are provided by the com company. Yeah. Then you have a pick list. So what is pick list? Pick list is nothing, it's just a drop down. So like, for example, if I come here into my system and if I select here as a manage data. So in your manage data, you will see, uh, you will see here, um, you know, there are certain detail is going to come as a drop down. Like for example, if I select here as a, uh, let's select uh, any of these detail here, which is your division. So if I select this division, there would be certain thing which will come here as a drop down. Like you can see all these detail, it is coming here, right? Like you can mm -hmm. see the status, which is active and inactive. So these are known as a pick list. So with the regular uh, session, yeah, tell me. Pick list, pick list could it be uh, something that the user wants to, the way the user wants the homepage to look like or? What's mm -hmm. in the homepage? Or... See, it is uh, homepage is a different thing. Uh, pick list is something when you have a drop down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so that is known as a pick list. Like, for example, if I come here <coughs> into your manage position, 
So in your managed position, you will see there are certain field which has a drop down. See when okay. certain thing you're just defaulting those value, right? So that is like, for example, here, uh, mm -hmm. you can see this position type, right? So in your position type, you will see like a regular position or special position, right? Yeah. Then here you can see it is critical position, critical position, non-critical position. So like this, you are seeing this as a drop down, right? These mm -hmm. are known as a pick list. Okay. With the regular session, we will see how we can work on the existing pick list and how we can make a, create a new pick list also. Sure. All right. So that's a, your pick list. After your pick list, you will have your, uh, uh, you know, event reason and event reason derivation. So we will see what is your event and event reason. So event okay. and event reason, it is nothing. It's just your, uh, see, there are total 25 events you will find into your success factor system. And your, uh, so you will see that all these events which are there. So. So what is an even? Even it can be your hiring, even it can be your transfer, even it can be your leave, even it can be your termination, any kind of mm -hmm. data change, right? So all these are event. All right. Okay, and what okay. is even? So there are total 25 events you'll find in success factor system. And what is mm -hmm. event reason? Event reason it is for what reason you are doing it. Like for example, you can see there is a data change. What is the purpose you're doing a data change? You're doing data change because it's a business unit change. You're doing mm -hmm, data mm -hmm. change because it's a correction. You're doing data change sure. because it's a reorganization. Okay? Sure. Okay. Why are you hiring somebody? You're hiring somebody because it's a new hire. You're hiring somebody because it's a contractor onboarding. You're hiring somebody because it's a expansion. Company is expanding. You're hiring somebody because it's a replacement of an existing employee. Right? So these okay. are the reasons. Right, right. So similarly, you will see that there is a leave of absence. So leave of absence, it's your event. And what is event reason? Why a person is going on leave? A person is going on leave because of education. A person is okay. going on leave because of long-term disability. A person is going on leave because of military services. All right. right, right. So these are event right. and event reason you will find into the system. So again, you can see there is a pay rate change has happened. Right, so this is an event, but what is a reason? Uh, pay rate change is happening because of cost of living has uh, increased. All, all right. right, all right. Then there okay. is some merit which has uh, increased. Then there is some transfer which has increased. Right, so these are the pay rate changes that you'll find. So these are the sure. event and event reason you will have to see that. Time off is a separate module nowadays. So, uh, so in your employee central, uh, you know, it's a separate module altogether time off. And then you can see add new employee here. Add new employee is nothing. It's just that you will see into your this section. So if I come here and if I type here as an add new employee, there are various ways through which you can add an employee. This is one of the ways through which you can hire an employee. All right, so you will see that add new employee is basically is divided into four section. One, it is identity. Second, it is personal information. Third, it is job information. And fourth, it is compensation information. All right. Okay. If I click on identity, you will see all these fields are coming here. And you have to fill all these fields. Okay. The okay. moment you will fill all these fields, and if you click here, continue, it will come here into the, uh, uh, into your personal information. But okay. you can see there are certain field which is mandatory. How you know that there, there are certain field which is mandatory with this asterisk this sign? The star, okay. All right, so with this star sign, you will know that it's a mandatory. So if you do not fill this mandatory information, system will not take you ahead. All right, so you can see this is your ad new employee. And in your ad new employee, I have shown you the fourth section also, which is identity personal information, personal. job information, and compensation information. So all these. Now, add new employee, it takes almost one hour to fill all this information for one employee. So it's a very time-consuming activity. Yeah. Uh, now, imagine, uh, let me say, if you're doing it for a, a large company that has about uh, more than 100 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, so does that mean that that, whole process is going to take 
No, uh, there are the, other uh, ways also, Mario, through which you can do hiring. This is one of the way I've shown you. Okay. Right. okay. So if you have a hundred employees for which you have to maintain a data, there are other ways also, which I'll show you with a regular session. Okay, how you sure. No problem. All those details. Then all here right, you can right. see if uh, there is a duplicate. So system will also prompt you that this employee is a duplicate. You want to accept this match or you want to ignore this match if it is not a duplicate. All right. Okay, so like okay. this also you will see there are certain uh, settings which you have to do for rehiring for your title for your all these configuration which has to be there it's like you know, so you will do all these detail here then you will see the okay. workflow what is workflow mario uh workflow well i think it has to do with uh the process or the life cycle on which uh well, I think it should be the, what the, the work it should be doing within the, the company or what, what, what is that? A workflow is a notification which gets triggered when you want certain approval. Okay, right? okay, okay, okay. Like for example, uh, if I have to go on leave tomorrow, so obviously I'll send this request to my manager, right? And based mm -hmm. on that manager decides whether you want to approve or you want to reject so that kind of a detail it is known as a workflow okay okay like for example here in this case you can see this employee whose name is richard max and he's applying for a leave which is uh, from the date 22nd of june till 26th of june right so nearly five days is applying for leave and you can see his status is still not approved right which is mm -hmm. pending here so like this, you know, you will create your all these workflow into the system. And based on that, you know, manager can decide whether they want to approve or they want to reject. Now, workflow, it's not only in the employee center. It is also there in a compensation. And it is also okay. there into your goal and performance management also. Because this template has to be approved by your manager, right? Whatever the level okay. of workflow which is there, like one uh -huh. level, two level. So in your success factor, the standard workflow, you can have up to six level of workflow and then up to you that you want to decide how you want all these workflow to be configured okay just one question the workflow should be configured by the employee themselves it's self-service or uh, and then the manager just has to decide whether to accept or not or is it something that the consultant has to do see the consultant will configure this workflow employee when they apply it will trigger the workflow and then it will go to the manager okay 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 so the consultant's job is just to configure it that whenever this workflow yes. is being used it goes to the manager right the cons it is our job to configure all these requests into the system right um your okay. workflow configuration and everything so that um uh, you know so that whenever the user they apply for something and if there is an approval which is required it should trigger a workflow okay okay I see, I see. then there are foundation object foundation object is nothing it's just a corporate data like for example yeah. you will see location group location legal entity then you have a business area division department cost center uh geo zone pay range pay component group pay group right frequency pay. so all these are your oh. foundation object so uh, when my, we... my question is um, the foundation object is provided by the hr of the company in which is requiring to to have ec installed right right see every information mario it has to be taken from the client okay, okay. all right we're going to take all the information from the client and then this is what we're going to configure into the system all right, all right, all right. All right, so any information, see, it is not my system, right? So it is a client system. So whatever the client will give to us, those data, so all those data we're going to maintain in the system. Okay, okay. All right, so so like, for example, you will ask your client, it's like, you know, which are the country they are present, right? We mm -hmm. will not know that which all country they are present into, right? So this client will give this information. Yeah. Right. Then you can see there is an event reason so uh, what event reason they want to be configured? So this all information they will provide to us, right? Okay, okay. Right. 
which all locations yeah, sure. they are present, all these detail the client will provide to us, which all division they have in the company, which all department they have, which all the cost center they have. So the client will provide all this information to us and we're going to map this into the system. Okay, okay. Then you can see the foundation object. So there are certain action also through which you can uh, create your uh, you know, employee data. So how we can create all these actions. That's something we will see in the coming session because it's a it's just a demo session, so it will be a bit difficult to uh, show you everything. So this is what okay. it's your detail. Then you can see with your foundation object, you will have your legal entity, business unit, division, department, cost center, location, location group. All these mm -hmm. things, we will discuss it uh, with a regular session. If you understand, it is fine. If you do not understand, then also it is fine because with regular session, we're going to discuss all these details. Okay, then okay. your geo June job classification, job function, you have a pay group, pay range, pay grade, pay component, pay component group, and the frequency. All right. So we're going to okay, take okay. all these data from the client and we're going to maintain this into the system. Sure. Then you have a relationship. What is relationship? Relationship is basically Achha, uh, in your success factor, you know, they don't call it a relationship, they call it as an association. Okay, so okay. these association, it is not the standard functionality of your success factor. So you have to create this if your client requires. Okay. All right. And you, association, it's always created from the bottom to top. You cannot create it from the top to bottom. Oh, okay. So first is department, department, division, division, business unit, and then like yes. anything. Right, so it is like department to division, division to business unit, or business unit to legal entity, or you can create it from department to business unit, to department to legal entity also. But it cannot be from legal entity to business unit, legal entity to department. So it is always okay, from okay. the bottom to top, you can create a relation association. Then there is a company structure overview. So you will see all these company structure. So let me show you this company structure in this system. So I'll come here into my success factor system and I'll show you all these structure here. So if I come here into my org chart, so you will see this in your organization chart, you will have your, uh, this structure, right? Like you can see my account, it is Ellen Ricker. So you can see all these people who are reporting to me, right? Okay, so, you okay. can see, so you can see my picture, you can see this, uh, your uh, name, you can see the position which I hold and you can see five by five. What is five by five? There are five people who are reporting and all five are hired. If you okay, want okay. to see more detail about Ellen, so if you click here, you will see all these further detail about Ellen, right? Like you can see this uh, phone number. Why did you click to, to have I just Ellen click on the her? picture. Anywhere you can oh. click on the picture, you will get this. Oh, okay, okay. So what's so, it? Uh, right. The phone number, the name, stuff like that. Yes, so you can see this like, uh, you know, the, the person, what, what about what about the user number, like um, the employee number? Employee Ellen. number, user number is not showing up here. Okay. But you can always go ahead and create this in the system. Oh, so you can create it in the system so that it shows up there. No, no. Uh, I'm sure the user ID has been created for Ellen, but it is not showing up here. Okay. okay. All right. Achha, in yeah. bracket also you can see there is something which is this is a this is a username last name and this is a username okay sure then you can see there your manager who's the manager where, where you're working you can see how many direct report you have what is the team size if you want to see further detail about an employee so you can see from your this section if you want to see like go to into certain detail about an employee so you can come here, you can see the time management, you can see payroll, you can see benefits. So all those details you will be able to see from your, this section, employee details section, all right? If you want to okay. see to whom Ellen is reporting, just click here, it will take you here. So Ellen is reporting oh. to NLOW, right? So you oh, can okay. see here we have come here. Now there are five people who are reporting to Ellen. If I want to see how many people are reporting to Jack. So you can see all these people are reporting to Jack. And if I want to see how many people are reporting to join, so here you can see all these people are reporting to join, all right? Okay, okay. If I want to see uh, to whom Anne is reporting, so you can see uh, these are the people Anne is reporting to, okay? So so these uh, charge flows are designed by the consultant? 
it is already designed. We just have to map employee to manager. That's it. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So sure. once you map the employee to the manager, this automatically it will reflect here. Then apart okay, from okay. this, you will also see your uh, see this is the org chart. Then you will see the position based org chart. So oh. your you can also create the structure using a position. So your position based org structure may and may not be similar to your org chart. Okay. So here you can see these five people are reporting and you can see every detail here, right? Like the position, the corporate services, human resource, the fidel, which location, what is the recruiter who has hired her. And then you can see this detail. FTE means full-time employee. So there was a one position and one person has been hired here. And if you click okay. here, here you will see all these detail about the position, like position title, division department, then if you want to see the position history, so you will see the position history. This was hired into your 1990. And Ellen has acquired this position from 2018, which you can also see from here, incumbent detail. So she was assigned mm -hmm. to this position on the 1st of January, 1995, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, assigned to this position. So you can see there are 27 years and nine months she has been holding this position. If you want to create a requisition, you can also come here and create a requisition from here. All right, so all these details, you can see that we are your position. Now, if I go a bit up, you will see. Now, you can see all these people are showing up here, their picture, but here it is. There's nobody who has been hired here, right? It is showing up here as a zero. Whenever there is a vacancy, so you will see this plus sign, it is coming here, which means to be hired. And if you okay. want to see your job requisition from your this section, you can come here and see your job requisition. Okay. What is the department is about to grow? Uh, let's say instead of maybe just to hire one person, you need to hire another person. Uh, like you want to expand the department. Then, uh, then you will have to create one more position here. So if you you have your this detail right, so you can see you can create one more uh, position here, copy position or P position or the lower level position, right? So if you if your okay. manager has a permission to all this, then she can create one more position here. Okay. Sure. All right. Then you have a directory based org structure. What is directory based org structure? It is nothing. It's just your, it's a kind of, a, um, a, you know, like yellow pages directory, right? So let's suppose if I want to find out here how many employee with the name Tom. So here it will show, so you can see all these people who are there with the Tom, right? Thomas, Tom, I don't know where Tom is coming here, but it is showing me four people here, all right? Okay. So like this, okay. it is a directive structure. You can search for anything. You have a lots of search option here. So you can see all these details. You have an advanced search also here. Like you can search with a specific name. You can search with the national ID, location, division, department, anything you can do here. Then you okay. have another kind of a org structure, which is a company structure overview. So in this company structure overview, this is a configuration which you have to do into the system. So you, if you want to search people with the cost center, so here you will see all these cost center and you will see all these level it will show you here, right? Okay, okay. So, so like this, you know, you will see all these section and you can go ahead and configure all these detail into the system, fine? Okay, sure. Then apart from this, let's see what is the next topic. So we have already discussed a position based org structure and then there is a report. So there are certain reports you will find into your system. So a standard report, which you can just pull it out. And then you have a custom report also, which you can create it. So custom report, it is like your ad hoc report or your uh, custom report you have, which is your uh, you know dashboard report. So all these you can do into your system, right? So you can represent that into the graphical way. You can represent that into the um, all these detail here, right? So let me show this report into the system also. So if you come here, here you will see this report. And once you come here into your report, you will see your, um, so you can see these these are the dashboard here. So if I click here into this dashboard, you will see all these sections, it will start showing up. <coughs> right, so here you can see all these detail, it has a status showing up here, right? So like this, okay. you can also create your report and you can also create a dashboard as well, fine? And if you want to see any statistics, so just click here, it will show you all the statistics here. 
So on how many people are there? So you can see all these statistics also just coming here. Okay. Now with this, <coughs> Mario, I have finished off with my demo. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, well, okay, so. Thank you.